Hello, our topic for today is a green flowering plant from a cell. How we can have a complete plant from just one single cell. In this video, and at the end of it, students will be able to infer, to know that there are capillary conducting vessels in green plants, that we have tubes, and these tubes, they are uh, called vessels, and they conduct materials inside the plant. Also, students will be able to deduce or to conclude the role of conducting vessels in plants. What is the role? What is the function of these vessels? And finally, students will be able to recognize, to know some of the tissues found in the leaves. What do we have in the leaves? What is the name of some tissues in the leaves? Let's start with remembering information that we took them in the previous videos and previous lessons. First, we studied before that all living things, either they are animals, human or plant, they are organized in five levels. If you remember, and you can uh, go back to the video, the levels of organization of a human body, we studied that we have five levels to have a complete living thing or a complete human body. They are cell, tissue, organ, system, and finally organism, which is the living thing. Also, this is applied for plants, and this is applied on plants. Also, plants as a human, they start their life by one single cell, and this cell is the plant cell. Also, we studied the plant cell, and we studied the structures of it, just like, that, like a human. And then this cell, it will be grouped into... Uh, many cells that are similar and they will form a, a level that is called tissue. Then many tissues, they will give me one organ, just like, for example, the leaf in the plant or the heart in the human body. Then many organs together, such as the leaves, the stem, the roots, they will give me an organ system. And finally, this organ system many organ systems, they will give me one complete living thing. And this is the same for the plant. Plants, they start their life by have, being one cell, then tissue, then organ, then organ system, and finally a complete plant. Now, we are going to study the structure of uh, one organ in the plant, which is the green leaf. So this is the green leaf. We made two section for the leaf. The first one is uh, the complete leaf. And then the second one, when we put uh, one small piece under the uh, microscope, and we want to study what, do, what uh, we have inside this leaf, how uh, uh, this leaf looks like from inside. So, as you can see, this is the picture under the microscope, and all of these structures that you see them, all of these parts, all of these, all of these colorful things, they are parts found in the leaf, and they are only seen by the microscope. First, pick out. We have this picture, and once we have pick out, it means pick out from this picture the name of the organ shown in the picture. What is this organ? What is the name of this organ? As you can see, this is the name. It's the leaf. It's a green leaf. Number two, I'm still with pick out because when I have number and then one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, since all of them, they start with number one, that means they all of them uh, in the same question, which is pick out. So number two, one, two, pick out, the tissues found in the following organ. I have the organ, which is the green leaf. Then we studied this leaf under the microscope. Since it's an organ, so that it is made up of many tissues. If we look at the picture, we can see that we have the names of these tissues. So these are the ones that they want us to mention or to name them. There are four tissues. The first one is the epidermis, which is the upper layer tissue. This one, the one that we see it, the one that we touch it, and the leaf. The second one, we have the 
transport vessels. So uh, we have the transport vessels. These are a tissue. Also, I have the spongy photosynthetic tissue. These are the spongy, these dots. And finally, uh, I have the palisade photosynthetic tissue. Every one of these regular shape, I call it palisade photosynthetic tissue. You know, the yellow parts. Pay attention, I'm not listing them in order. I'm just mentioning them. Okay, so they are the epidermis. I have conducting or transport vessels tissue. I have the spongy photosynthetic tissue and I have the palisade photosynthetic tissue. As you can know, uh, as you can see, the epidermis, it's the upper layer. It's the one that if we uh, touch any leaf, we can touch it. The, the uh, below tissues, the spongy and the palisade photosynthetic tissue from their name photosynthetic, it means they are related to the process of photosynthesis so that they help the plant or the leaf to make its own food, but you are not responsible to know what is their function in details. Then I have the transport vessels from its name. They are tissues for transportation. So they transport certain materials in the plant. Okay, type. Let's continue with the same picture. The second question, indicate the function of transport vessels in the leaf. What is the function? Indicate, it means I'm just will mention without explaining why or how. So they transport water and minerals to leaves. You know that plants, in order to grow and to survive, they need to absorb the water and the minerals from the soil through the roots. So this water and minerals, it will not stay in the roots unless it will be useless. It must be transported or carried or moved to the other parts. Who's going to transport them into the other parts? It's a special kind of tissue that is called transport vessels. It's not only this. Also, the green plants, we studied that they have a process of photosynthesis, which is when leaves make their own food. Also, this food, it's needed for the growth and survival of plant, and it must not stay in the leaf. leaf. It must go also to the other parts as the stem and as the roots. It needs a certain part to carry it. This part also, it will be the transport vessels. But for sure, I have transport vessels to only carry water and minerals, which is up from the roots up to the leaves. And I have another special and different kind of vessels, of transport vessels that are only responsible to carry the sugar down from the leaves to the other organs, mainly the roots and the stem and the other parts. Now, in the picture we see here, I have a certain uh, part that is called stomata. Define stomata. Define, it means explain the meaning of, or uh, what is stomata? What's the meaning of stomata? What is stomata? As you can see here, these here, I have this opening. This opening on it, I have a pair of cells or two cells or just cells. These cells, they are called stomata. They regulate the gas exit change between the plant and the environment. As you know, plants, they need air to survive. They need the oxygen so that they can breathe and they need the carbon dioxide so that they can make their own food. The entrance of carbon dioxide and the release of oxygen, it happens through this part, which is called stomata. and here, it's extra explanation. I have the air spaces from its name. Air spaces, it looks like a waiting room for the carbon dioxide to be used by the leaf and for the oxygen to be released outside the leaf. Okay, so by this stomata, which is cells, uh, that their only function is to regulate or to control the uh, entrance of gases and the release of other gases, which is which we call it exchange of gases between the plant 
and the environment. Now, I have an experiment that was done, and this experiment, it was to study the function of transport vessels tissue in the plant. We want to prove or to confirm or to know the function of these transport vessels. What do they do in the plant? So an experiment was designed to know this function. I have two containers. In the first container, I put a plant, which is the parsley that has green leaves and also stem. And I put it or I immersed it in water. The second container, I have the same plant, which is the parsley, and I immersed or I put the stem of this parsley in a blue ink. Blue ink, it is a liquid solution that its color is blue. And here in A, I have just water. Let's, number one, pick out from the question the objective of this experiment. Again, objective means why we make this experiment. What is the purpose of doing this experiment? So it is to, it's the first point, to study the function of the transport vessels, tissues in the plant. This is the, ob the objective. This is why I make this experiment. Type number two, specify the leaves that turned blue. Once you have a question that starts with specify, that means you have to answer with the following way. First, to indicate, to tell me the kind, to tell me the name, to tell me the group. And second, you have to explain how did you know or why to justify your answer, okay? So here in this question, specify the leaves that turned blue. It means which leaves they become true, or they become blue. Uh, as you can see, I have two containers. So by the question, they mean which leaves, yani, in which container the leaves they turn blue. And because I have specified, I must say why or how did I know. So the answer would be the leaves of the stem that was placed in blue ink that means in container B, turned blue. This is the first part of the question. I indicated, I named which leaves they become blue. Now the second part, I have to say why or how did I know? Because there are transport conducting vessels in the stem that carry the ink up to the leaves. So because inside the stem, I have conducting vessels, I have tissues, their only job is to carry things inside it. So in this case, these tissues, they carry the blue ink up and because it's blue, it colors the leaves with this color, okay? So this is the function of the stem or of the vessels that are inside the stem. So by the end of this video, now we recognize why we have conducting vessels in the plant and also we recognize some of the tissues that are in the green leaves. If you like this video and you find it helpful and useful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.